Okay. What's here? You said. Uh, wait, give me a moment. There is something wrong with uh, my presentation. Wait a minute. Yeah. yeah, if you're just joining us, you can put in the chat your name and where you're joining us from, you know, just so that we can have an idea of the folks in the room. My name is Wilson, and I'm the facilitator for Wizard of Africa. So, yeah. I see some new names are just joining in. So if you if you just join, you can put your name and your location in the chat. Uh -huh. Yeah, well, I see. I think it's working. Uh, yes, it's perfect now. Okay, so I think we can start. So. Baluku from Uganda. Great. That's Brian from Uganda. Great to have you. Okay. Hi, everyone. My name is Wilson. And I am, of well, course, some of you already know me. But for those who do not, I am the facilitator for Wikilows Africa. And I am going to be your host today. Uh, yep. Today's training, today's workshop is tied to mobile phone photography for Wikimedia Commons. I hope you can all hear me clearly. Great. So the training is mobile phone photography and it's a collaboration between Wikilabs Africa and Project Coricat. I'm Project Zoom. Coricat, Project Coricat are our old time friends. And we've had a, a running relationship for a while now, and we have absolutely enjoyed that relationship. So now we are what we are seeing today is an improvement upon what's a similar training we had last year around mobile phone photography. And of course, it will be taken by Wasi and uh, assisted in the very background secretly by our very own good friend and his brother, Rafi. So they will be guiding us through the important points. And bearing in mind that all that you will be seeing today from the training is an offshoot of uh, their personal experience uh, and how they came about Project Coricat and the success stories, the learnings and the improvements, and all of that is what they will be sharing with us. The objective of the training is to get you to realize or understand how best to take, how best to use mobile phones to contribute to Wikimedia Commons in the hope that you will also participate in the Wikilabs Africa contest, or you could go on and do other big, uh, better oh, things. So yeah, we welcome every one of you. The next voice you will hear is that of Wasi. Uh, I think uh, Wasi already has uh, uh, a slide that, has his introduction. So maybe we'll see you can start with that and then take it off from there. So if you have any questions, you can put the questions in the chat and I will take note of them and then we will ask Wasi at the end of the session. And uh, I'm sure Wasi also has room for uh, to make the training a bit conversational. So yes, when the opportunity comes like that in the course of the workshop, you can take advantage of it. But if you have any pertinent questions and you feel like you'd like to uh, unmute your mic and ask the question, then we'll have a question and answer session at the end of the training. Uh, Wasi? Yes, uh, am I perfectly audible? Yes, you are. Okay, so welcome everyone. I am Wasi from Bangladesh. Today I will take this session on mobile photography from Project Kurikad and Wikilabs Africa. First of all, let me introduce uh, myself. Uh, okay, so I am Wasi Ulbahar, nickname Wasi. I am the project lead of Project Kurikat. I am Project Kurikat is a Wikimedia Commons based uh, project which is uh, aiming to uh, bridge the gaps of uh, visual contents in Wikimedia projects like Wikimedia Commons, Wikidata, and other Wikimedia projects. 
and uh, I studied the project Kurikar uh, from my passions in your photography. Uh, so I'm not a pro photographer. I am a passionate photographer. I started my uh, photography journey with a uh, mobile and I'm not using a DSLR though, but uh, I started my journey with uh, mobile and I know the pain points and the uh, uh, yeah, and the tricks so uh, which I used in the mobile so I will uh, share this with you all how I uh, came up with uh, my uh, pains in uh, during my journey and so I'm I am also an organizer I am organizing uh, several projects in the Wikimedia uh, Wikimedia verse and uh, I'm uh, working with other several uh, projects so so okay so he, it was some introduction i would be very happy to learn hear from me about yourself but uh, as i have a limited uh, time so i will have to skip that for now so let's go to the next okay, so here is the content list which i will cover today uh, there's a lot of stuffs which is uh, i think very crucial for you to do well in your uh, photography journey uh, there would be some topics from mobile photography, the basics uh, which you need to know uh, before you start your journey. Then uh, I will share some editing skills. Uh, I will share some editing apps which you will need to uh, edit your photo from your mobile. Then I will share some information about common best photography as you all of you are uh, as all of you are joining this session before the, uh, participating in Nucleus Africa, so you'll need to know something about the Wikimedia Commons and how to use uh, the Wikimedia Commons. Then there will be some tips on mobile photography. And uh, lastly, there will be my uh, address from where you will get, you can get touch to me. Okay, so, and uh, lastly, I will share this slide with you all after this session. I will uh, request you to review the slide after this session because uh, there is a lot of content and I won't be able to cover all the content during this session as I mentioned earlier, we have a limited timeline and but I will try to cover all the basics that you will need. So let's start. So, so, so first one is mobile photography. And here is some uh, image that's uh, uh, and uh, surprisingly all of the image you are seeing in the slide are, are taken by mobile. There, there is some image taken by me. Um, in the uh, the image you are seeing in the middle is a lucky image for me. It was taken with a uh, basic mobile uh, back to 2022 and with the image I start my project Kurikat and uh, there are some other photos uh, the first photo you are seeing is a uh, headphone wireless headphone and I took the image with my mobile and uh, I used a uh, uh, I use uh, some lighting equipment which I made with myself and they are uh, with uh, here is a basic knowledge and there's a, there is an image of a screw you are seeing in the right side of the slide. It was taken with a simple tab with a 3 megapixel camera. Um, I, uh, basically the size of the uh, screw was uh, 2 or 3 millimeter and I uh, tried to take the image uh, with my tab and yeah, it's uh, the result of the a result of, of uh, my hard work and there's some other image which was taken by my friend with just a mobile so i want to say that it doesn't matter if you are using a mobile or some basic uh, equipments it matters what you want to do uh, if you have if you have the passion for photography or if you are if you have dedication you will be able to make some great photography with what you have in your in your hand so let's go to the next slide okay so first of all before studying photography you need to understand uh, the the equipment you have you need to understand your mobile best with uh, what you can do with your mobile 
it's the best part before starting for photography because that because the more you can understand uh, your mobile the best photographer you can be so firstly you need to know about the camera specification of your mobile uh, you can you can know about the camera specification from uh, searching the google you just simply uh, search with the model name of your mobile and you will get the all the specifications of your uh, camera you can search in youtube for reviews from tech expert they will uh, demonstrate how to use uh, the cameras of your mobile and uh, then you can uh, if you are, don't know what the name of your device you can simply go to the uh, settings of your mobile and about the phone you will get the device name like the screenshot i have provided in this slide go to this uh, settings and go to the about phone you will get the device names simply search for google and get the all the specifications of your uh, mobile and the camera uh, from there uh, what's the is the megapixel of your camera and uh, what's the uh, what's the uh, focus length of your mobile camera lens uh, what features uh, does the uh, camera have so for for taking a photography for taking a photograph first thing you will need this camera app which is uh, this uh, default camera app in your android or the apple device uh, simply clicking on the uh, small camera button uh, in the mobile you can go to the camera app uh, you can use some third-party camera app uh, like uh, Google Camera. There's some extra features. You can uh, use the default app or the third-party apps, which is uh, best for you. Uh, if you go to the camera app, uh, you can uh, see the uh, user interface like the right side of this slide. There is a screenshot from the uh, camera so apps of my mobile. There are some option in the uh, above the uh screen and the under the screen there's some um, uh there's options in the photo portrait more video and night uh, uh, you have to understand what all this means and which uh, options is needed for which um the uh, which reason then uh then the lens uh in the mobiles there are some built-in lens you don't have the capacity to change your lens like the DSLR but there are some also uh, detachable lens which you can use uh, with your mobile um, you can use some macro lens you can use some photo of uh, some telephoto lens uh, we can use uh, we can uh, which can be attached to it your mobile uh, you can use this lens you can uh, simply search for external lens uh, for a mobile with the device name in the google and you will get some uh, lens which is best for your mobile okay so here are some uh, basics photography uh, things i will cover now uh, before that i will request all of you to uh, explore your camera explore your device uh go to the camera app and see what features is they are available which uh, which you can do with your camera what's the uh megapixel of your camera go to the google search for your uh, device and see who or what features are available which you can do go to the camera go to these uh camera settings and see what uh, options available in there and uh go to the some options available uh, in the apps and uh, thus you can understand your camera better which will be uh, needed uh, for you uh, needed for you while in the photography journey okay so now uh, the thing is image format um, there's some the uh, format of uh, the image uh, there are some uh, format which is used with your uh, image and the first one is jpeg uh, it's the compatible format to which you can upload in the commons and jpeg is the uh, widely used uh, widely used uh, image format and uh, most of the uh, mobile camera take pictures in the jpeg format and uh, the, uh, the jpeg format is uh, uh, widely acceptable in everywhere and that's why most of uh, most of the mobile phones uh, use uh, jpg format uh, 
uh, but there's some pro there's a problem with the JPG format because uh, before uh, to, uh, before, uh, while taking the uh, photo, the JPG format uh, compressed the uh, file size and uh, it uh, reduced some data, which is uh, important for your, uh, which is important for your image. And uh, JPG is commonly used for sharing photos online, and for that it uh, reduced the image size and uh, it will. It will reduce uh, the sharpness of your uh, the image and uh, it will not give you that much uh, freedom while editing and that's why i don't uh, recommend you to uh, and take your image with jpg format but uh, if you uh, if your uh, camera can't uh, take image uh, with other formats uh, rather than jpg uh, you can use the jpg format and then the format is uh, raw r a w raw uh, the raw format is the uh, least processed image type when you took uh, when you take image uh, in raw format with your camera it doesn't reduce uh, the details it uh, it preserves all the details or the sharpness all the, uh, the data in your image and you can easily uh, edit all the uh, details with your editing uh, app uh, it gives you the freedom to uh, process all the uh, all the part of your image and uh, i will uh, I will suggest you to use the raw format while taking uh, image, but there is some problem with the raw also because uh, before uploading to commons, you will need to transfer the, uh, transfer the raw format to JPG format because raw format is not uh, compatible for commons. Uh, you can uh, take a raw image with your camera by go to settings and change the format. And uh, but if your camera don't uh, have the capability to take uh, the image in raw uh, you can uh, use some third party uh, camera apps which will give you the option to take image in raw so then the composition is the best part of your photography if you want to make uh, your photography perfect then you need to know about the composition there are some rules in the compositions which you will need to know before starting photography there are uh, some topics named grid lines, rules of third, uh, golden ratio, domain size, etc. Uh, if you want to uh, enhance the quality of your photography, uh, you can simply use these tricks to make your uh, photograph uh, more uh, more catchy than others. Okay, so first one is grid line. Grid line is useful for the the. Uh, techniques of uh, composition because it will guide you uh, in uh, follow uh, to follow the uh, uh, follow the techniques in uh, composition uh, the grid line is a, uh, a feature of your camera you can uh, enable the grid line from going to the camera apps tap on the settings and there would be some uh, options named composition lines or grid lines uh, it, it depends on the uh, mobile you have uh, the camera app in your mobile so if you cannot find the settings uh, find the option in the settings uh, simply search in the google how to enable grid line in the in your mobile search by your device name and you will get the tutorial i have embedded a link uh, with uh, my uh, with my uh, mobile uh, with my mobile device uh, where you can get the idea how to search that and uh, you'll need to enable the grid line while taking photograph because it will help you uh, in following the techniques of composition okay so then the first uh, rule of composition is rule of third uh, rule of third is the basic principles in photography uh, it simply divide the, uh, the frames into thirds both horizontally and vertically uh, if you enable the grid line, uh, it will simply uh, divide the uh, divide the screen of your device into three part, and uh, this three part will help you to uh, place the subject of your photograph, uh, which will make the uh, image uh, more eye catchy. Uh, can be placed in creator uh, by uh, using the rules of third. 
it will uh, divide uh, you uh, it will divide the screen into nine equal parts the intersection of the lines uh, points so the first point it just can be placed to create a visual balanced dynamic composition so simply uh, during the photograph uh, during taking the photograph uh, simply place the subject uh, subject of your photograph in the intersection of uh, the lines it will give you the uh, op uh, it will give you the chance to make a well balanced uh, well balanced uh, image uh, so you can see the uh, results in the image i have provided in the slides in the first image the main subject is the canon and the dog and uh, the photographer placed uh, this both uh, subject in the intersection of the lines and secondly there is the candle and the photograph and the photographer placed the flame in the intersection of uh, the uh, lines and thirdly there is a baby and uh, the photographer uh, placed the eye of the uh, of the baby in the intersection of the uh, lower part which is the main subject of the photograph and uh, by using the techniques you can uh, uh, you can uh, guide uh, the uh, you can guide the uh, person who is uh, seeing the image to uh, make a well-balanced uh, image. Okay, so secondly is the golden ratio. Golden ratio is a mathematic uh, terms uh, which you can use in the photography, and there is uh, some um, similar to the th uh, you know, to the rules of third. Uh, the golden ratio, uh, the golden ratio, uh, divide your image into. Uh, for a six uh, part of your screen, uh, you can use the golden ratio by uh, enabling your grid lines into golden ratio. There is an option uh, may be available in your device. Uh, you can simply enable the golden ratio the grid line option from your camera, and it will give you the chance to use the golden ratio principles in a photography. Uh, in the golden ratio principle, uh, you can uh, simply place uh, the subject in the you can the uh, you can place the subject uh, in the small part of the golden ratio it will uh, it will make a well balanced photography like the rules of third and uh, it will uh, guide the viewers uh, viewers eye towards a point of interest in the image like uh, the image in uh, available in the slides there are three images and you can simply uh, you see the results of using golden ratio and uh, the photographers use the golden ratio principle successfully and uh, it helps the uh, uh, viewers to see the subject uh, your subject uh, the photographer tried to present okay, so the sec uh, third part is uh, dominant eye okay so the dominant eye is the center of a composition technique in photography that involves placing the subject or point of the interest with the center of the frame Okay, so this is uh, in the other uh, in the previous parts in the third uh, rules of third and in the golden ratio we place the subject in the intersections of the lines and in the part of the golden ratio but in this technique in the dominant eye uh, we'll place this main subject in the middle of the uh, screen uh, like uh, the, in this image present in the slides uh, we place the main uh, part of our subject exactly middle in the image uh, and uh, it will help you to take portraits so while uh, you're uh, taking photography if you want to take portraits just simply place the main part of your portrait uh, in the middle of your screen or if you can uh, use the techniques while taking photography, you can simply use the editing tool uh, by cropping and straightening, and you can use the dominant eye by that, uh, dominant eye technique by that. So the next part is uh, depth of field. Depth of field is a photography term that uh, refers to the area of the image that appears sharp and in focus. So what happens so when you place your camera uh, very near to the subjects, uh, the, when you click on the subjects so, uh, in the screen, the subject uh, become more clear and more sharp and the background become blur. And it's the uh, terms named depth of field. 
uh, when you take photograph, uh, some part of your subject become more sharp and some parts of your image uh, become blur. And uh, you can use the uh, techniques when you are uh, taking some uh, image of uh, image of flowers or you are uh, taking image uh, of uh, products photography or doing product photography. You can use the that uh, technique. And uh, you can use the depth of field technique by controlling the aperture of your camera. I will cover the aperture in the next part of this slide. And uh, yeah, this is the uh, idea of the depth of field. Uh, you can learn more about the depth of field for which I have been uh, from the link which I have embedded into this slide. Okay, so the next thing is negative space. Uh, negative space uh, in photography refers to the area around the subject that is intentionally left empty or unoccupied. So if uh, there is one subject in your uh, photography and you want to take a clear photo a clear photo of your subject and you don't want uh, any, any destruction, uh, destruction in your photography, you can use uh, the negative space technique. Uh, in the negative space technique, uh, just uh, put your subject into one corner of the uh, image and uh, make sure to uh, remove any other uh, subjects from the uh, from the screen. And uh, you can use this technique uh, to make some aesthetically valued image. And in the images uh, uh, embedded in this slide, you can see the results uh, in the images there's the subject the first one is there is a man and you can see there is no other subjects in the uh, uh, in the image and there's a, a blank sky and in the second image there is a ship and there is no other things uh, uh, available in the picture there is a plain sky and a plain field and uh, these images are aesthetically valuable this is not a conventional way, but it's uh, valuable for your photography. Uh, you can use this uh, negative space and uh, you can also learn about negative space more from the link uh, in this slide. And the, the next is uh, the leading lines. Okay, so the leading lines uh, will help you, uh, the viewers, uh, to guide to the subject of your image. Uh, you can, you know, use the techniques of leading uh, leading lines with the grid lines you have enabled in your camera. Uh, leading lines is the photography, uh, photography term, which is a compositional technique that guides the viewer side toward the subject or point of interest. Uh, they, uh, they can be found in the first way straight or curved lines. Uh, the, you can see the results in the images in the slide. Uh, there's uh, three images uh, and the images, uh, I, the images you can see, if you look into the images, uh, it will guide your uh, eye to the center of the image because I use the leading lines technique in the image. Uh, it doesn't matter where you uh, put your eye in the image, it will always uh, guide your eye to the middle of the image because uh, it uh, creates some lines in the uh, image. Uh, you can use this technique uh, with the grid lines so with your camera. Okay, so the next part is angles and perspective. And uh, yeah, it's the part uh, when you want to, uh, you don't want to take the image from the conventional way. Uh, you, you just uh, move up, uh, move your position and take the image from a different angle. So uh, angles and perspective refer the way in which the camera is positioned in relation to the subject by changing the angle and perspective of the shot. Photographs can create a variety of visual effects and uh, convey different moods and emotions. And uh, when you uh, see a subject with your bare eye, uh, you will see the uh, image convention and if you took the image with your camera it will make your image conventional but uh, if you just uh, change your position and uh, want to see the image from a different perspective 
uh, it will give you a chance to take some aesthetic angles which you will make the uh, photographer uh, uh, make the photography out of the box and uh, you can see the, uh, the result of the technique in this uh, image uh, is used in this slide uh, the image uh, of uh, the two image is uh, of uh, one uh, building which is situated in Dhaka. The first one, which I took in 2022, uh, it was uh, taken from a different angle. Uh, I took the image uh, from the lower part of the building, and uh, I used the uh, I used the different perspective, uh, which is uh, available for people. And uh, the second one is the conventional uh, perspective, which usually people see from the uh, from the uh, from the different perspective okay so you can see the result uh, when you change the perspective the subjects uh, become more aesthetic and become more eye catchy you can uh, i will always suggest you to uh, don't uh, just take a, a one image of your subject from a uh, one's perspective always change your uh, position uh, find different angle find different perspective but uh, take uh, uh, several images of your Image from different perspective, different angle, and find the best angle, which is uh, perfect for uh, the subject you uh, were trying to take. Okay, so the next part is lighting. Uh, lighting is the uh, best option. In uh, lighting is the best option when you are trying to uh, capture the uh, subject. Uh, there are two types of lighting. One is natural and one is artificial. The natural lighting is the uh, available lighting uh, for, for during the day or during the night. Uh, you can use the natural lighting to uh, make the images. Uh, you can use the different parts of uh, the day, uh, like the golden hour, the blue hour, twilight of the afternoon to make your image. And uh, you can use the... Uh, uh, you can use uh, the sun or the moon for different uh, uh, different type of images. You can use uh, the light source or uh, light source uh, like a uh, moon or sun uh, for backlight or side light or front light. It depends on your mood or and the purpose of your image. Like uh, in the images in the slides, uh, there are three images. Uh, the first one was taken uh, during. Uh, the twilight and you can uh, see it's uh, a very vibrant one it's perfectly seeing the uh, different lights of the sky and the uh, and the vibrant colors and uh, the second one is uh, was taking during uh, afternoon and uh, it uh, makes uh, the image uh, more aesthetic and the third one was taken during uh, the uh, during the golden hour uh, and there is uh, different types of uh, lighting in the nature and you can use the best uh, use of the natural lighting during your photography. It will give you the chance to make your photography uh, different from the others. Uh, like uh, uh, if you're taking a, uh, if you're taking a photograph of a subject uh, when you're taking it in a morning, uh, and uh, if you're taking uh, take the image of the same subject in the afternoon, you will be able to differentiate this result. Uh, maybe the uh, light in the afternoon is uh, more uh, is uh, more vibrant uh, than the image taken in the morning. You can use the uh, image uh, taken in the afternoon because the uh, the result is uh, more uh, is uh, more different than the other one. Okay, so the next one is artificial lighting. Uh, if you are trying to take uh, image of your subject in indoor and you don't have the, uh, you, you, you are not able to use the natural lighting because in indoor you can uh, use the light of uh, the sun or moon, uh, you will have to use artificial lighting. And uh, there's different source of artificial lighting or for photography like a softbox, camera flash, diffuser, etc. Uh, those the equipments are very expensive. Uh, just uh, some professional equipments and you will have to uh, spend thousands of uh, dollars to, uh, uh, to buy those equipments. 
but uh, don't worry, there is some techniques to uh, replace the, the very expensive uh, equipments, which I tried to do during the beginning of uh, my uh, photography journey. I just simply used a cardboard and a LED light and a uh, artboard to make my own softbox, which I used uh, to take uh, some product photography. And uh, in the middle part of the screen, you are seeing that uh, my that uh, DIY project, uh, which I used to uh, take my product photography as a softbox. And uh, it took uh, me uh, two or three dollar to make the whole softbox and it was uh, quite impressive and uh, you can see the result in the right part of the slide uh, the image was taken with uh, my mobile and using the softbox i uh, made with the cardboard and i will uh, suggest you to use the resources you have in your hand uh, don't uh, become sad because you don't have the expensive uh, expensive uh, equipments uh, because uh, you don't uh, you don't have the access to the uh, equipments you can simply use uh, the things you have in your hand you can use uh, the table lights uh, you can use the uh, led lights uh, to make your own uh, softbox like my one uh, you can uh, use uh, the uh, cardboard as the uh, background. You don't need expensive uh, to, uh, back lead, uh, background. You can use the cardboard as a background. And uh, that's it. You can use the resources in your hand to uh, make uh, your uh, subject uh, more colorful. Okay, though, so the next part is exposure. Before going to the next part, uh, uh, I will invite you to uh, uh, ask any question if you have any or uh, sharing any uh, feedback if you have any. Uh, so the, uh, the, this part is for you. You can say anything uh, which came to your mind during the session. You can simply raise your hand and ask the question, or you can ask the question in chat box. I will answer that in. Uh, so, if you have any question, you can ask in the in the chat, and uh, Wasi will will respond. Uh, if you want, if you want to ask the question directly, you can also ask now. It's a question time. Anybody with a question? Okay, well, see, I think you can go on. Uh, if there is any question, they will indicate the raise of the hand or in the chat, okay? Uh, okay, Olson. So the next part is exposure. Uh, it's related to the uh, technical part of your camera app. To use this, uh, use this part, you will need to know more about your camera. Which feature, uh, which features your camera have, and uh, which versions your camera app uh, like uh, the ISO aperture or the shutter speed. You can uh, use these options uh, by enabling the pro mode of your camera. If you don't have a pro mode, you can uh, yeah, you can uh, simply download some third party app like the Google cam uh, Google camera or other uh, third party app. Uh, by this, uh, you can use these techniques. Uh, okay. So the in the exposure part, I will uh, cover the ISO, aperture, and the shutter speed. So the first one is ISO. ISO is a photography term which refers to the sensitivity of the camera sensor of your mobile to the light. Uh, you know, there is a sensor in your camera. Um, a build it uh, into the camera and the sensor uh, receives the light uh, that comes from the subject uh, uh, subject and uh, the, the sensor use that uh, light to build the photograph you are trying to uh, capture so uh, the, uh, you can uh, you can control the sensitivity of this sensor uh, you can uh, if your subject is in a dark uh, dark environment 
you can make your sensors uh, more sensitive to the light and thus your sensor will receive more light from the subject and your subject will be uh, more exposed to light and if you uh, if the environment is too uh, too, uh, too light and uh, if you want to uh, if you want to uh, uh, if you want to decrease the exposure, you can uh, decrease the ISO, and the, uh, it will make your sensor uh, less sensitive, uh, less sensitive uh, to the light, and uh, thus you can uh, change the brightness of your. Uh, you can change the brightness of your subject. To uh, to do that, you will have to first uh, enable the pro mode of your camera, and there will be ISO option. Uh, you can increase or decrease the ISO value, uh, such as 100 or 20 or 400 and so on. Uh, the 100 one is the lowest uh, value of the ISO. And if you use 100 ISO, uh, it will make the subject dark. And if you use the highest ISO, like the 600 or 3200, it will make your image more bright. And uh, you can see the results of different ISO in the image uh, used in the the slide the first one was taken with uh, four uh, iso 400 the second was one taken with iso 800 and third one was taken with iso 1600 you can see the results the first one is more dark the second one is a little uh, uh, more uh, light and the third one is the uh, uh more light and uh, the second one is the normal lighting of your subject which you need and the third one is overexposed and the first one is underexposed. So you can uh, use the ISO, uh, ISO option to change the uh, exposure of your, uh, of your subject. Okay, so the second one is aperture. Aperture feature is uh, available in your pro mode like the ISO in the aperture. Aperture is a photography term it refers to the opening uh, in the lens through the, uh, which light enters into the camera. So I have uh, told you it in the ISO part that your uh, camera sensor use the uh, light uh, comes from the subject uh, and uh, the sensor receives the light and uh, it creates the photograph. And uh, who, uh, when the light enters into your sensor, it uh, comes through the lens, uh, which is the first part of your camera. Uh, the uh, light comes through the, your lens and it falls uh, into the sensor. And uh, you can uh, control the uh, lens, uh, how much light it will enter in your sensor, how, uh, how, uh, ex how much exposure you will need to uh, you know, photography. And uh, it's, the, uh, it's the, the idea of aperture. Uh, you can uh, control the aperture. Uh, so you can uh, control the aperture value, and uh, you can uh, thus you can uh, control how much uh, uh, the, uh, how much light it will enter through your lens, and, uh, and this uh, thus uh, you'll be able to control the exposure. And uh, the aperture value is measured with f stop number, and uh, f this uh, value is uh, measured with the uh, uh, the fraction value of, of the fraction value of uh, the second and uh, if uh, the uh, if the aperture value is uh, lesser it means that uh, it will uh, allow the light to uh, allow the light to come into the sensor uh, for a more time and it will make you uh, it will make your image more bright and if you uh, exposure value is uh, higher. Uh, if your exposure value is higher, it means that the light uh, which will come to your, uh, the time of the light come to your sensor will be lesser and uh, it will uh, allow, the, uh, allow the light to come to your sensor uh, less and thus uh, the exposure of your image will be uh, less and uh, thus you will be able to control the exposure like the ISO. And the third part is uh, shutter speed. And shutter speed is almost similar to the other parts. Uh, with the shutter speed, you will be able to, uh, the shutter speed will be able to control the exposure. And uh, it is also 
uh, it is also measured with the fraction value of the second. Uh, the faster shutter speed uh, means that uh, the light uh, comes to your uh, sensor. Uh, at the time your uh, uh, the light comes to your sensor is highest, and uh, thus the the uh, the image will be more exposed into light, and the brightness of your image will be more. And uh, you can uh, control the shutter speed uh, from the uh, pro mode, and you can uh, thus control the exposure of the shutter speed. And these all are the exposure technique. The first one is ISO, second one is aperture, and the third one is shutter speed. Uh, you can use all these uh, options uh, from the uh, pro mode of your camera. I will request you to go to the camera enable the promote see which features uh, is available into the promote of your camera uh, play with the features and uh, see how you can uh, control the exposures uh, how you can uh, control the uh, brightness of your camera how you can uh, use the depth of field and uh, thus you can be able to make your photography uh, more perfect uh, uh, the next part is editing. Uh, the several editing apps available for your uh, phone. Uh, you, you have uh, some editing apps uh, for uh, photo and some editing apps for video. Uh, you have uh, lots of editing apps for your phone. You can use those uh, for uh, post processing of your image. Uh, there are some uh, apps named uh, Adobe Lightroom, which I, I personally use. Uh, the next one is Snapseed, and the third one is Pixart. You can uh, use those uh, apps uh, from uh, downloading this uh, from the Play Store. And uh, there's some other video editing apps named KineMaster. In short, you uh, you got CapCut and VN Editor. Uh, you can download uh, those from Play Store and use those. Uh, apps uh, to edit your photo and uh, video uh, and now i'll demonstrate you uh, the adobe lightroom how you can uh, use the adobe lightroom for post processing of your image and uh, make and correct the mistakes you made while taking the images uh, so i'll jump into the my mobile and demonstrate you the um, demonstrate you the editing apps Don't forget, guys, if you have a question, you can ask in the chat or you can indicate and uh, what you will answer. So can you see the screen perfectly? Yes, Wassi. <laughs> okay, so this is the uh, screen from my mobile and I will uh, share how to edit the images. And I, I will open the Lightroom. And I have uh, installed the right, uh, li uh, uh, Lightroom recently just to show you how you can use uh, after installing it from Play Store. Uh, for this, you will have to sign in into your, uh, with your Google and uh, I will do that now. <laughs> Uh, yes, so this is uh, the ads in the light room. And this is the main uh, landing page uh, of Lightroom when you will open the uh, Lightroom app. Uh, you will have to choose uh, the image for, of which you want to edit from here. You can select uh, from the gallery uh, 
a gallery which you want to uh, edit so i um, i am choosing a photo which i uh, took uh, today and uh, there are some features available in the right room which you are uh, seeing in the high uh, screen uh, there are some uh, editing options in the uh, lowest, uh, lower part of the screen there are preset crops, edits, masking, healing, etc. And in the upper part, there are some options. Uh, you can uh, save the image and share this uh, share this with your friends or you can save the, uh, your device. So the uh, main part for editing is the options uh, available in the lower part. There's preset. I am clicking the preset. Uh, there are some preset and uh, most of the presets are available for the pro uh, pro uh, adobe lightroom you have to pay for to get the adobe lightroom pro but uh, don't worry there's some other free uh, uh free features available like in the crop uh, option there are some features like aspects you can change the expect uh, from here you can uh, i'm using the original one then you can straight strengthen then the uh image you can uh yeah strengthen your camera uh strengthen your image uh, by uh using the dial available here uh then you can rotate the image uh, you can flip the image and uh, i am not using the uh options right now then there is the edit option and there's some uh, features uh, which is available free for your lightroom and this uh, auto option which will uh, allow, uh, which will allow you to use the uh, ai and it will automatically uh, make your pictures uh, it will automatically correct the mistakes of your picture like the lighting or the exposure or the color you can use the auto or uh, auto mode or you can use the customs uh, options i'm resetting that and then the lighting uh, you can edit the exposure and the contrast or highlights shadows white blacks you can control the exposure how much uh, brightness you need in your image you can i am lowering the exposure a bit because uh, there is that it was a sunny day and uh, the sun was very bright and the next uh, the contrast option you can control the contrast uh, i am i am increasing the contrast and this uh, highlight you can uh, uh, control the highlight and there's shadows, there's whites and blacks to control the exposure of your uh, exposure of your image. Uh, you can also edit in the HDR mode. Uh, you can enable that and uh, edit that in HDR mode. Uh, I'm currently disabling that. And the next part was color from here you can uh, edit uh, the color grading of your image you can uh, color grade of your image from here or you can use the uh, color grading circle from here you can change the shadows midtones highlights and the global uh, color grading uh, to change the color grading uh, simply touch on the color wheel and change the uh, change the color of your image and then you can change the midtones uh, the same like uh, the other part you can change the midtones i am using a yellowish midtone and the next is the highlight uh, again you can use the uh, color wheel here to change the highlights uh, uh, highlights of, of your color grading and then the global part uh, by other part you can change that and done i'm um, done with the color part and the next part is blur but uh, it's available for lightroom premium so i can use that and the next uh, free feature is uh, effects and there's some effects like texture clarity dh 
uh, you can change the texture as you wish you can uh, change the clarity or you can you, uh, change the dehesh and then the vignette and uh, i love the vignette effects because it changes uh, the uh, it turns the uh, image dramatically but uh, i will suggest not to use uh, vignette most frequently because the vignette uh, is helpful uh, when you are uh, when you are capturing a portrait or where there is a uh, single subject you can use this vignette part and when the subject is the middle of your screen you can use the vignette part so i i am trying to uh, change the vignette i will diffuse the vignette and you can see the effect of vignette I'll not change the vignette here as uh, the subject is not in the middle part and it's not a portrait. You can change the grain, you can change the amount, and then the option is details. You can sharpen your image, you can uh, you can uh, decrease the noise of your image. When, uh, it's uh, very useful when the uh you are taking image uh, in a dark environment because in the dark environment there is a lot of noise uh, in your image you can decrease the noise by simply increasing the noise reduction and then this color noise uh, you can uh, decrease the color noise here you're from here and this uh, optics so you can remove chromatic abr uh, aberration I, uh, if you want to know about the chromatic aberration you can simply uh, search in the google or youtube and you can enable lens correction from here i'm not using these options because it's not uh, uh, it's not a uh, it's uh, not uh, useful for this particular image and these um, profiles because but uh, these are available for premium so i'm i'll let use that and then you will have to save the image in your mobile. To do that, you can click on the share option. You can save copy to your device or you can share it with your Facebook or WhatsApp or Telegram. You can uh, export, you can click on the export as and, and change the settings uh, that you want to uh, do in the uh, image. I click on the export test and you can select in which format you are uh, uh, you are uh, hoping to export like you can export in jpg format dng format tf format uh, you can change the dimension uh, you can change the quality and you can also include watermark if you want and i want uh, to change any of the settings i'll export that and then you can view that in the gallery and that's uh, the image which i edited uh, the, uh, edited recently and you can see the uh, before and after effects by clicking on the screen this is the after uh, after uh, result of uh, the editing and this is the before uh, result of the editing and thus you can use the adobe lightroom to edit your image you can use uh, you can also use uh, uh, the uh, sna uh, google snapseed uh, there are some other features which is not available in google uh, in adobe lightroom you can use uh, those uh, features from uh, google snapseed i will suggest you that down uh, install the both uh, apps and you use the features available in the both apps just so back to the slides so is my slide uh, visible now Uh, so the next part is commons based photography as you are uh, going to participate in wikilabs uh, africa you will need to use uh, wikimedia commons you will need to upload the eu images in wikimedia commons and uh, to use wikimedia commons you need to know something 
and uh, I have uh, I have uh, made a list of what you need to know in this slide. Uh, you can go to the link by clicking on the uh, clicking on the text. I will provide the slide, and you can go to the uh, links and uh, explore the things. And uh, uh, the first thing is common set. There is a Wikimedia common set in the uh, uh, in the Android App Store. You can download that commons apps and you can upload your image and video from there and this project scope there's uh, some specific uh, project scope and the, you, you can be able to upload the uh, images which falls under this project scope and there is some um, the rules and regulation which type of image you cannot upload in commons and you will get the list in what commons is not uh, what commons is not and there's uh, uh, there is a uh, law named uh, freedom of panorama uh, you can explore that there's uh, there's licensing uh, there's a specific license you can use while uploading image in wikimedia commons you can uh, be able to uh, know about the licensing from there and uh, there's some other copyright rules by uh, rules which is uh, uh, available in your country you can know about the copyright rules from there and there are some uh, tools available for Wikimedia Commons. You can use those Wiki, uh, tools to uh, enhance, uh, enhance the uh, work in your Wikimedia Commons. There is G Drive to Commons. You can upload uh, your images from uh, Google Drive to directly to Commons. There are Flickr to Commons. If you image is stored in Flickr, you can upload those uh, uh, you can upload the image uh, from directly Flickr to Commons. Uh, you can, if you want to upload video, you will have to use uh, video to Commons. And because uh, you cannot upload your video in .mpg format, you will have to convert the .mpg mp4 format to .web format. And uh, to uh, to do that, you, you can use the uh, converting app from a post uh, Play Store or you can simply use the video to commons tools to do that because uh, if you want to convert the uh, video in your uh, device it will take lots of time uh, you can use the video to commons it don't take uh, that much time then there's some other tools named uh, wiki shoot at me video card tools scrub tools nearby press viewers etc you can learn more tools uh, from the links i have embedded in this slide and next there are some tips for you and the first one is uh, capture multiple shots i have uh, talked about it in the angles and perspective part of this slide uh, I'll, i will suggest you that don't take a single shot of a subject take a multiple shot as you can uh, take different shots from different perspective with different lighting with different uh, techniques uh, just uh, take uh, shots as you can and then uh, before uploading the images I uh, just filter the images which is uh, not that much good or the image which are not uh, which are blurry uh, uh, in where the subject is not clearly visible uh, just filter those and uh, upload the images from different angles perspective or lighting uh, upload those images in commas so you'll need to uh, capture uh, the uh, suggest uh, from multiple angles uh, so capture multiple shots uh, the next one is turn on the question in camera uh, you can do that uh, from the settings of your camera app turn on the location and uh, as a result uh, the, uh, the the locations where you have taken the image will be automatically uh, uh, automatically stored in the metadata of your image and it will help uh, the uh, the editors which will use your cam uh, which will use your image uh, uh, in the different wikipedia articles or in the different wikimedia projects uh, and it will also help your image uh, to visible to more uh, audience and uh, it will help your uh, it will help your image uh, to be uh, to be the, uh, available for quality images or the valued images or the uh, featured images etc and then uh, use uh, terabytes or google Drive for storage um, sometimes our uh, these hard disks or these stories of our uh, device crashed and we lost all the images we have taken during our lifetime 
and to avoid that i will suggest you to use uh, any cloud storage and uh, the mostly available cloud storage is google drive but uh, the disadvantage of google drive is the storage is limited and to avoid that you can use terabox uh, you, you you will be able, able to use uh, one terabyte storage in terabox uh, you can use any of the cloud storage uh, options uh, to store the images and then uh, hold your phone still while taking photos. Uh, uh, if you don't do that, uh, the subjects uh, subjects of your photograph will be blurry and uh, the, you won't uh, get the result you are trying to get uh, fr from your photograph. And uh, to do that, you can use a tripod uh, to make your uh, make your uh, device uh, still, and uh, it will help you to uh, take uh, the perfect shot with your uh, camera. Uh, then play with the reflections. Uh, you can play with the reflections, which is available in the uh in the glass or in the water you can play with the reflection of the uh, of the reflection of the uh, of your subjects in the glass or water so or wherever you can get the reflection and the next one is avoid zooming in uh it will increase the grain of your subject always try to uh, get close to your subject and take uh, the shot uh, because uh, if you um, zoom in it uh, be, uh, it will uh, it decrease the quality of your uh, photo because uh, most of the mobile camera use the uh, uh, use the digital zoom and uh, in the digital zoom uh, it will it increases the grain of your image and uh, uh, if you're using DSLR you know to be a, uh, it don't be a problem because it use it don't use uh, the digital zoom but uh, as you uh, you're using a mobile phone uh, it will it will decrease the uh, quality of your image so, so I will I will suggest you to about uh, zoom in and then take candid try uh, try always to take candidates uh, don't uh, before taking any portrait don't tell uh, this uh, don't tell the people that I'm taking your image because it will uh, to destroy the uh, environment and it will destroy the shot or just try to take uh, image without letting uh, the uh, people know and then after taking the image take concern from the uh, from the uh, people uh, and thus you will be able to take a perfect uh, portrait uh, and the next part is uh, clean your phone lens uh, uh, before taking a photograph always uh, make sure that your uh, lens is clear because sometimes if your lens is dirty it will uh, it, it will make some defects in your image you will always uh, need to clean the full lens to get the or, or get the perfect uh, photo and uh, if you clean the lens uh, it will help you uh, during taking the photo so uh, this was all the tips and the techniques uh, i i thought would be crucial for you uh, I try to deliver all the things uh, I uh, try, uh, I know about the photography. Uh, I don't know I would be able to express those, but I will uh, suggest you to uh, know more about the image uh, about the techniques and tips from Google or YouTube. Uh, and I I will provide the slides to you, and uh, I will suggest you to go through the slides and uh review all the links i have provided in this slide and if you need any help you can get in touch with me in my uh, email uh the email is available in this slide or you can uh you can reach to me in telegram or facebook instagram with username wasil bahar uh, i will be happy to help you and that's all thanks for your attention uh i try to uh and uh, I try to make this session informative for you all. And uh, that's it from my side. And now if you have any question, you can ask that. Thank you very much, Wasi. Uh, thank you, guys. Wasi has done an amazing job. I'm sure so many of us have learned so much from, from listening to Wasi. So, 
I think it's time to ask questions. If you have any questions, this is a good time to ask. Uh, I see if you have any question, you can ask in the chat. But if you feel like asking directly, you can unmute your mic. Okay, well, see, there's a message in the chat from Alex. He says, uh, is it okay to go as far as color grading for WLA contest? Um, yeah, I'll answer that. I think that's actually my question. Alex, it's okay to do color grading. However, we will encourage you to not be too, do not edit the picture to the extent where it's difficult to, to recognize exactly what it represents, or it doesn't, it doesn't, uh, it no longer, it distorts the original meaning of the picture. That's the word I'm looking for. So uh, imagine if if you were taking uh, a picture of of uh, the sky in Kenya, and then you change the color to red, and Kenya has never had red skies, you know it alters the the true image of what Kenya represents. So we we want you to do editing. We want you to retouch the pictures, but not to the extent that it distorts the image from the reality of things. Well, I see you wanted to say something. Okay, so I was trying to say that don't over process your uh, image. Uh, just edit uh, the edit uh, which uh, edit the uh, exposure or the, or the uh, the or the composition. Uh, because uh, if you over process the, the image, uh, it will lose uh, the interest of the viewer. That's it. Yeah, any other question with a question? I see Fatima says a beautiful presentation. Is it possible to boost a photo taken on Android so that it can be on the same level as a photo taken on an iPhone? <laughs> well, see, that's for you, I guess. Uh, okay, so for that, uh, I discussed uh, in the uh, beginning of the uh, slide that always use the raw format. Uh, it will it won't decrease uh, it won't decrease the uh, image uh, quality. Uh, but uh, but uh, uh, I discussed that there are some disadvantages because you will have to uh, convert the raw image into a GPT. But if you want to take a quality full image, always shoot in raw and then edit uh, the image, uh, address the exposure and the color and the other things and then convert that into the JPG and then upload the commerce. Uh, so the suggestion is always shoot in raw and that's it. Thank you very much, Wasi, for that answer. There are some other questions. Okay, I can't see any more questions. Does it mean that we don't have any other questions? Are we down? No more questions? Uh, okay, Wasi, do you have any... Uh, Final words, any tips? Uh, okay, so if you uh, if I want to say any final word, that uh, always try to uh, always try to do photography with what you have. It doesn't matter which device you have or which equipment you have. Uh, it but it's matter what you want to do. If you want to uh, take a beautiful picture you can do that which resource you have you can use the best use of your research, uh, resource and you, you'll be able to take a beautiful picture so don't be sad be, uh, with uh, what you have always try to do best and uh, try to study with uh, uh, you, by which you can uh, use the best of your resource and you will be able to do that Awesome. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Wasi. We are always grateful to have you join us at Week Loves Africa. It's always an exciting time. And we learn so much. And I have to tell you, Wasi, it's all it's all very interesting. You know, uh, I know I heard most of this last year, but listening to you talk about it this time sounds all new and all fresh. So I I, I think 
uh, I have to appreciate the fact that you keep evolving and you keep growing in the knowledge of your craft. And also to salute Project Corikat and everyone who has made it possible over the years to do the things that you are all doing. So I say big well done. And I hope again, if I do call next year, it would not be the case of Oliver Twist asking for too much. Yes, thanks a lot for inviting me into this session. And I enjoyed this session. And uh, before uh, preparing the slide, I had to do some studies. So thanks for that because you uh, made me to do that study. And uh, that's it. And I will uh, thanks to all the participants who joined that. I don't know if I could able to. Uh, I could. I, I would able. I could able to uh, give my best. But I tried to do that, and uh, I would be happy. I would be happy. It would be helpful for you. Great. Uh, I see Florence in the chat is saying, Florence is saying she's always impressed by what you do with your phone. So a lot of us are, are stuck with the old method of doing all the presentations and everything on our computers. So you can imagine how amazed we are every time when people are able to do presentations on their phones and hold meetings and all of that. It makes us feel a little bit, uh, <laughs> I don't know how to describe it, but it's also always very inspiring. So I understand what she's saying and I'm saying thank you also. We're all very grateful and uh, we look forward to future collaborations and future communications around the same subject or various other subjects that will come up in the future. We Love Africa is grateful. We say a very big thank you. Thank you also to all the participants, to all the organizers who spread the information. Yes, the recording will be made available on the event page where you registered and you can always go back and watch the recording from the training. And also, Wasi will make available the presentation slides. And so we will share that also on the event page. I just want to also mention that there will be, this is one of the trainings in the series. And there will be another training on next week. Two trainings actually next week. Uh, they are both on licenses. So we close Africa I would like to, to show First of all, I'll share this link with you now in the chat so that you can always keep abreast of trainings and events that come up from Wikilove's Africa. It's the news, the news tab from the Wikilove's Africa meta page. I'm posting that right now in the chat. So if you ever need to find out what's going on, you can feel free to check, feel free to check out the news section. So the next two trainings that will happen next week on the 4th and the 5th are titled one in French and one in English. The first is intellectual property rights and licensing policy and commons. And the next is the same topic, but in French. So if you're interested, I'm also posting the link now in the chat. This is for the licenses that will be anchored by Florence on next week. So if you are interested, you can click on that link and register so that you will get a notification and a reminder to attend that training. Uh, if you are also interested for the one in French, you can also check the same category and you can register for the training and get so that you can get reminded when it's time for, for the training. Otherwise, I want to say a very big thank you to everyone who has been who has attended and who has been with us from the beginning up to this point in time. I am super grateful and I look forward to seeing you at the future trains. Otherwise, I hope you have a very beautiful Good Friday, an excellent Easter, a beautiful Ramadan, and uh, a restful weekend. Cheers, everyone, and bye from me. Thank you also, uh, Arafi, in the background. I see you. Thanks to everyone from Project Corica. Thank you, Wasi. Thank you, uh, all of the other people who has made this work. Well done. Thank you. Merci beaucoup, Fatima. Fatima is French, but she sat into the training all through. Thank you. Thank you so much, Fatima. Thank you. We are grateful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome. All right. So bye bye, everyone. Bye.
Bye, all. See you later.